we know that she's that opera, yes. But I don't think everyone knows Mimi was also an excellent leader, singer, yes. German leader, operator, Afrikaans leader. She yeah. loves the Afrikaans lead. She has done so much for the Afrikaans lead. Hi, Anina and Andres. Um, it's so lovely to talk to you there in Pretoria. It's wonderful to be here. We are truly delighted. Yes, lovely. Thank you for the invitation. It's my pleasure. It was so lovely to see this wonderful project that you did with uh, Mimi Kurze. And of course, Mimi Kurze is known in Vienna as well because she sang at the Wiener Staatsoper. And um, uh, tell me about this lovely project that you did with her or for her. Did. So it happened like this. Uh, Fox and House in Johannesburg um, decided to honor Mimi in what they call the Garden of Glory. And there they bring tribute to all a uh, wonderful star that was in South Africa. And when I heard that they are doing it for Mimi, um, I, I called the owner and said, please, if possible, I would love to come and, and organize a concert for it because Mimi is the darling of South Africa and she, she deserves to be to, to be recognized so much more and she deserves all acknowledgements um, that needs to go to her. So we decided, I called Anina and Kurt Roblau and Patty Jeffries and the little Feldenhuis and we yes, all and Ms. Del and we did this wonderful concert for her and it was, it was really magnificent. Mm. I think it was a wonderful idea of Andres because um, I've come to know Andres as someone who was really an enthusiast for the arts and especially opera, but most especially he specializes in coloratura sopranos. He loves the genre, yeah. which of course it's home with me because I am a coloratura and we are very, very good friends. So when Andres phoned me and he told me about this wonderful idea of Boxwood House, it was just, there was just no question about it. And um, the program consisted of beautiful Afrikaans leader and um, a few operetta areas and um, it was so well received. The thing that really touched me with this concert is Mimi was sitting in the front row and she literally knew every word, she remembered every word of every item on the program, yeah. which is nerve-wracking. <laughs> because when you see her sitting there, and you sing Hamvia and you mess up the words, you be <laughs> frown, and she turns to a friend next to her, and you can see the question that she's asking, and say, what on earth is happening? But it was such a wonderful honor. It was mm -hmm. the, the privilege to be part of a project like that. Um, I, I, I really kudos to Andres for getting all the singers together, and of course, Foxwood House. For, for that for that project. To me in my, my music career, I believe that this is, was one of the most special concerts I've ever done. And mm -hmm. not only the crazy experience to do it for Mimi, but also to share the stage with very dear friends. I mean, it, it was just, it was truly a magnificent and marvelous experience from beginning to end. But this is so interesting for me that uh, all these things you're saying about Mimi Kurza, because I've also read a little bit about her history here in Vienna because I, uh, every time I walk in that uh, famous corridor in the Staatsoper backstage, uh, mm -hmm. at the stage door, her picture is there, and she mm -hmm. was a darling in Vienna. She was, and and she was very popular. She was uh, also a great artist with a, l a wonderful reputation, a wonderful personality, and it is. For me, somewhat of a pity that I know in South Africa she's very known, but I wonder if South Africans really know what a wonderful opera singer she was here in Vienna, or, and and that she, you know, in her career, that she is, and um, and it's so. And this is why this immediately caught my eye when you did this this concert. That I thought, yes, this yeah. should be happening for her. Absolutely, Petra. I, I, I cannot agree with you more. Um, someone once said, you know, with the social media structure that we currently have, 
the world has become one and we are all connected. And if Mimi were to be a, a, a singer currently, she would have been a superstar. Yes, exactly. There is just no other yeah. world. Mm -hmm. I, I get goosebumps if I just think about that for, for that contribution mm -hmm. and um, the tremendous voice that she was, still is, blessed with. Um, you, you get born with an instrument like that. Mm -hmm. And what she did with the voice and for South Africa is it's just purely admirable. And it's wonderful that, that you, you noticed what, what was done here. Um, yes, we were really yeah. excited about it. I think in South Africa, there is very few singers who can say that have either been not touched by me yet, or whether it be direct, where you physically know her and she inspired you and she helped you, or whether it be indirect, where you just heard a, heard a recording of her. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, on, on my side, I grew up in a household where we listened to classical music, mm -hmm. but not so mainly opera. And on my 16th birthday, I heard on the radio that evening, the presenter said, we're going to listen to a recording of the Queen of the Night. That is most probably a world record. She sang it more than 520 times in four different languages. And I thought, oh my goodness, this, this sounds truly magnificent. Let's hear And that music started. And I will never forget when I heard that voice. <laughs> I, I, I sit here and I still remember the feeling I had. And I thought, but is it humanly possible to produce a sound so perfect? Mm -hmm. And she lifted that voice and she sang mm -hmm. those crystal, crystal clear topics. And I just knew then, then I need to do that. That's what I need to do. So she made a recording 50 years prior to my being that still inspired so much parts of it that it mm -hmm. made me do opera. So I think that that's a wonderful legacy to have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, the I impact. Think, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think today we we see a lot of uh, stars, you know, you see you, and, and a lot of talent and a lot is going. And like you say, it's the social media and, and it's so available for everybody to see and everybody is uh, present on it. But I always think if you are a star that can even 50 years on or or how many years on still make an impact on people and not even in in your presence, but just by the voice or just by the, like you say, you heard a recording. That to me is real art and artistry, you know, that that, that can live on. And, and, and I think we have amazing singers and we have amazing artists in the world today. But um, isn't it wonderful to think that that those years where somebody who didn't have this these resources like you say didn't have social media to promote herself she just promoted herself by being an artist you know and that's i think that is something that we also have to acknowledge and also have to um give her that credit to and also, I think the huge diversity of her, because I mean, we know that she's an opera, yes, but I don't think everyone knows Mimi was also an excellent leader, yes. singer, German leader, operator, Afrikaans leader. She yeah. loves the Afrikaans lead. She has done so much for the Afrikaans mm -hmm. lead. I think that um, knows that anyone. That I, yes, yes, mm -hmm. I, I, I must agree with you. By, by simply starting to record, and leaving that that memory and inspiration for us as singers, it's it's phenomenal. The the respect that I have for her is yes, you know, in, in this day and age, it's a privilege to still have contact with her, with a person, a singer of her stature. It's a tremendous privilege. And I think to me that the most special part about her is because she is this magnificent artist mm -hmm. and she is this phenomenal person but she's still human yeah. and she shows it and she will take you around and she'll make you yeah. laugh and she, I, I love her to bits. There's a loneliness about her. And very yeah. few artists yeah. can say that. Yeah. And that's a quality that I would to have. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> absolutely. Well, I was wondering because this, this picture that I'm talking about is such a 
I mean, it's such an iconic picture. It's, just, it's a black and white picture, and it's, it's she's so beautiful and young, and 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 you almost have this idea that she's so far above, you know, because she's so talented and so on. But if you say she's got this personality, it's so lovely to hear that. She does, and she's got a lovely sense of humor. Oh, fabulous, <laughs> love it. <laughs> but I must tell you this: as as a young child, I think I was um, six years old. And I was auditioning for the Tiger Boat Children's Choir. We lived in Cape Town at that stage, which I then I got into the choir. And the next thing I heard that we were going to perform in the Nico Milan, as it was called then, the Artscape, as it's now. And Mimi was to sing with us. I was so afraid of Mimi, exactly mm -hmm. because of the reason which you mentioned now that she came, she is this diva. But not, not in the negative sense of the word, but we all knew who she was, what she did, and what she'd done. And it was such an inspiration just to be able to stand there. I'll never forget that moment as a young child. She inspired me so much. She's the reason why I started singing Polaratura. I also wanted to try that. Really? <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And of course, yes, the voice has the capability. And then um, later on, as I... Um, completed my studies, I, I ended up studying with her privately for a few months, which was wonderful. That was, that was a tremendous experience and in a beautiful home. Um, I, I still I remember the most beautiful painting of herself in, I think it was Violetta, yeah, uh, Violetta hanging in, in her beautiful house. And my mouth was just hanging open because really? here is this wonderful beautiful woman in person and I'm actually yeah. learning from her and yet it's this gorgeous painting which she brought over oh, from yeah. Vienna and it was a tremendous experience she really impacted me in that sense um, inspiring me I learned a lot from her her technique is yes. impeccable it's it's really it's just insp inspirational I also told me how lucky are we to especially when we were at home, so when she was sitting right here in front of us, how lucky we be to have our biggest idol right here and we can actually go and talk to her and yes. we can share with her. That it's, how many people can say that? Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I mean, this is now, all, uh, and, and also the reason why I talk to South African artists, because I so wish that uh, something can happen in South Africa that the art and and especially opera and uh, classical music can just um, have more the opportunities and and uh, the possibilities that because you are all so talented and you do such great work um, and and I wonder also for her if it's not so frustrating if she just sees this you know working with you and knowing that uh, it, it, there's not much at the moment that that's happening there. I mean, there there are a lot of concerts and things happening, but what I'm talking about real opera houses, real uh, places where you can perform and where you get the opportunity to get this uh, or, or to get these opportunities. Then that she had, for example, in Vienna. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you say, but you know, we live in very difficult times with the whole COVID that happened and the resulting lockdown. But the positives that came out of that is people became much more, how do you say that, um, inventive yes. and creative in creating platforms and for performances, whether it's small concert performances or um, versions of opera. But I think that Despite or rather in spite of the times that we live in, opera will never really um, be extinct, especially in this country. We have got tremendous voices, natural voices across the spectrum, um, which serves as an inspiration to young people, um, to young students, young people wants to set out to do opera. And I do believe the strong spirit of the South African, let's let's call it South African artists. They're very resilient. They've got a lot of drive and vision and focus, and 
that will keep our crew going. I do believe firmly in that. Although the times are difficult, Opera will continue and we will, we will create platforms. I agree. Yeah, well, I've seen, I've spoken to a few South African artists as well and, and, and singers, and I hear of these lovely projects that everybody is doing. And even the, mm. um, the African singers, you know, they like the, with Josie Opera, they're doing amazing work and yes. they're just working. You know, you see them on Instagram and you see how yes. they're rehearsing and, yes. and doing little projects in the gardens and um so this is what i i think it's it's exactly what you say the spirit the south african spirit is it's, there absolutely yeah. yeah yeah that's it's the spirit that we will not lie down <laughs> yeah. yeah yes music will survive yes. yeah so what is what is uh, next for you uh, do you have uh, projects coming up that um that you're working on oh yes yes um uh, there's a concert that I'm currently preparing for on the 27th of November at the Banner Stolzo showroom in Pretoria. And it is with the tenor Kurt Grubelar. And we, we decided jointly to present a program that consists only of operator duets, operator arias, and we've got the violinist Zell also contributing to the concert. And it's going to be wonderful. It will be the afternoon. On the 27th at three o'clock. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then for next year, I will leave that to Andres because there's a lot of surprises. Oh, really? <laughs> so for next year, Tell me. I think, I think the, the, the best will be to kick off the year with a plan next mm -hmm. year. So we, we're planning an opera gala where we're going to do extracts from famous operas um, at the Office Women's Theatre in Pretoria. And of course, Alina is going to sing with me and I will perform and there's going to be a few other um, artists as well. So that's something we are very excited for. Yeah, it's, it sounds amazing. And who are the other artists that you have with? So there's still a few that we're going to um, wear to confirm with us. But okay. they, we're hopefully we're going to be around eight um, solos. So we, yes. we, we plan on doing some of the big, big works for the big operas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were looking at um, including lovely ensemble works from uh, Lucia and Rigoletto. Yeah. And then you need a good variety of voices. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we've got everything set down on paper, then we will let you know. Yes, <laughs> yes. it sounds amazing. And um, uh, are these venues where you perform, for example, are people very open to, to offering venues for, for this uh, uh, type of opera singing and, and classical singing? Okay. You know, I'll answer. <laughs> um, I think yes, but also no. Because to really perform opera, you need a theatre. Yeah. And unfortunately with COVID these days, we are so limited to having only a certain amount of people that it's, it, it's not worthwhile to have them in big theatres. So we, we need to get people to sponsor us their places where we can go and host small and more intimate concerts. Mm -hmm. So that's a yes, no answer. <laughs> yeah. It's a very good answer. My first thought was it's the search or, or rather to find the right acoustic environment. To oh, perform yeah. a lovely concert, you know that is that is of it is it's so important. It's essential when you want to present a lovely program to people. So there are many theatres, but they're not necessarily built for opera singing or classic concerts. Um, the Afri Forum Theatre is is a wonderful venue. It's a beautiful, it's lovely, um, safe parking, secure parking, and there are options of restaurants also available, which is wonderful. Um, and uh, what is the other one? Atterbury Theatre is also lovely. Then there is the uh, Rudderwood Civic Theatre in Rudderwood, which is wonderful acoustic-wise. So, yes, to answer your question, yes, there are theatres available. The thing is now, since um, the rules and regulations of COVID has been lifted, it is quite a struggle to find a date, but we were lucky to find this date um, next year with the Afro Gala. But we are also considering to host another concert in the second half of the year in Rudderwood. 
at the Civic Theatre, which has also got wonderful parking. You know, we, we like to look out for the comfort of our audience. So there must be good parking, there must be restaurants in the vicinity, or the theatre must offer um, that type of um, possibility for mm -hmm. the people. Yes. Yeah, and and in South Africa, I mean, they they are smaller theaters. That I heard uh, somebody told me about the the uh, Susselberg uh, Theater in in the Vol Triangle also. Um, yes. Yeah, and and uh, it's also something that I think the big cities like Johannesburg and Pretoria, you know, that things happen there. But uh, I wonder also in these smaller theaters if there are. Um, many things happening there, and and uh, also then for for audiences of, of those areas, you know. Yeah, there, there are things I performed uh, at that at theater. I think two years ago, I did a branch with him. They, it was beautiful. It was lovely. It's wonderful acoustics. Um, I think at that moment in time, people were still a little bit hesitant to go out to attend a concert. Oh, okay. Um, mm. I think it was the, the, the first open open opening of the dates after the, the severe lockdown that we had. Mm -hmm. So we found that the attendance was um, a bit impacted, which which were due to COVID, which is understandable. But yes, indeed, there are theatres. There are theatres. Mm -hmm. But I know that quite a few um, singers also venture out beyond the theatre and they try and... Um, see if there are certain churches with very good acoustics also that are open to um, classic concerts for, for singers that also have wonderful pianos. That's of, of course very important. The, yeah. the um, monument is if you don't bring an orchestra. Yeah, mm. yeah of course, you know, there, there are these things that, that has to be there for for a concert to be able to happen uh how do you see um or, or what is your wish um now uh for yourselves for for the future <laughs> well i think first and foremost foremost even most is um to grow as an artist and um, that's something quite important one good thing that did come out of lockdown so we had much more practice time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so we, were, we, we could have had a chance now to go more people talk. So we, we can grow. So. Yes, and the name is the free concerts. And then I think more and more concerts. That will be wonderful. Yeah. Hopefully, yes, we can offer it some change. Mm. That will be given and that will be prime. <laughs> For me, it would be wonderful if, if all the, the talent in this country can be acknowledged and can have opportunities and are granted opportunities to either study or perform or make their contribution to opera or to classic music concerts. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is the passion of my heart at this moment in time. And of course, yes, for all means to perform as much as possible. Mm. And do you think the um, young upcoming um, artists, you know, the ones that's studying now, is do they feel positive about the situation or are they all thinking, well, you know, you have to leave the South Africa to be able to have a career in singing? I know there is a lot of young singers that are really, really struggling financially, tremendously. And I know of private individuals that are contributing, that are assisting and helping young singers, young artists, which is so important. Um, the grants don't necessarily always go where they should. So I think that would be a 50-50 situation. Um, many struggle. Um, I know of a few who actually returned from Europe because of the COVID and the lockdown situation. So. It's, it's a 50 50 situation. Um, I know many of them ventured out into different um, spectrum of um, career. They, they completely left classical music, which we can understand. Um, but then there are also young people that, that work hard. And as I said earlier, because um, lockdown has been lifted, more and more opportunities present themselves. So more and more singers get the opportunity. So I, 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 it's, it's like, 
strong belief and, and hope and, and really my prayer that, that this release of the effort, so to speak, would bring renewed hope to young people, to young singers, to, to really keep on dedicating their talent. Yeah. And but this mm -hmm. what I find so wonderful about and, and now also speaking about you uh, to you too is really this very positive spirit uh, that all the South African artists have. Uh, you know, uh, that you, you just um, see that it can work or that, that some things will be able to happen for you there. And it's wonderful. I think it's, it's great to, to hear mm -hmm. that. But now tell me just on a lighter mm -hmm. note, um, and, you know, we can start with you. How do you prepare before a performance? Do you have little rituals? Oh, yes. I eat a lot. <laughs> I start by eating a lot. <laughs> I eat morning, noon, and night. <laughs> okay. And then depending on what, what repertoire that I'm going to perform, I sleep a lot, and I don't talk for about three days prior to a concert to ensure that the voice is really fresh, which mm. absolutely infuriates my husband and my doggies. <laughs> so silent. <laughs> but they also enjoy it because mommy doesn't talk loud oh, okay. and strong. <laughs> well, and then on the day, of course, also vocal rest. But um, as for the, the, the music and the voice preparation, that's a never ending story. That never ends. If, I, I was saying to a friend of mine yesterday that if I, if I don't practice for three days, I feel it. And after a week, I wouldn't even venture outside to go and sing. Really? You, need to, you need to keep the consistency yeah. of keeping the voice fit, um, yourself vocally fit, and of course the, the study and the memorization of the music. That, that happens continuously. That never ends. Yeah. And you, Andre? On my side, well, I always ensure that I know my work at least by heart a week before concert. Yeah. And then... I'm, I'm very chilled. I'm a very chilled person. You can ask me. Before the concert, I no, usually sit there and fan myself. And he makes jokes. <laughs> I'm a joke. <laughs> I'm always a joke and I go around and then just before I hit the stage and I land the wings up, I really try and I push myself. Okay, can I do this now? And I go and I do it and I enjoy it. I just enjoy it. Really? That's why I do it. Enjoy it. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, no, absolutely. And one thing I don't do, I mean, that means I don't. <laughs> I know because usually when I eat before performance, I always feel like my voice is heavy. So I usually eat after. <laughs> well, I and I asked people also because I heard I, I spoke to a South African singer, um, Thomas Arlong. Do you know him from uh, Zurich? Yes, yes. And we were talking, and and I uh, I was asking him what what do you do after performance, and he said he opens a bottle of wine. Now I want to oh, ask really? you. <laughs> some, some people say some people say they <laughs> they some people say they drink wine after performance, and some people say they drink beer. Now I want to hear what what do you do? Do you drink champagne? The more the Champ more champagne there is, the better. Really? So, champagne is of course the most innocent thing in the world. It's fit for an opera singer. Okay. Yes, and sparkling water, <laughs> liters okay. and liters of sparkling water. Really? <laughs> 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 no, this is so interesting um, uh, what everybody does afterwards because, of course, you are then so uh, in this energy of performing and so on. So, yeah. Oh, I must, add, I must add to that. I take off the high heels. There's oh. nothing better than getting rid of the high heels. All right. <laughs> <That's totally laughs> <easy. laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny, yeah. But um, guys, this was so lovely to talk to you, and thank you so much for for um, you know your time and for telling me about this wonderful concert that you did with Mimi or for Mimi. And good luck with all your projects, your upcoming projects. And uh, I would love to come and and uh, watch one of your performances now. Oh, and yeah, when I'm in South wow, Africa, nice. yeah. Yes, please, we must make a plan. <laughs> yeah, no, I will definitely. I'm going to let you know when I'm when I'm there, and then oh, I would love to come and see. Yeah, good. Perfect. But have a lovely afternoon.
And um, so yeah, I hope to speak to you soon again. Thank you. Thanks again. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.